Welcome to Pixarize's scene for thiamine deficiency. Hopefully, you've already mastered the B1 basics with our scene on thiamine biochemistry. This scene takes place in a fitness center where a couple of determined gym rats are feeling the burn and pursuing serious gains. And with Pixarize as your one weird trick, you too are going to make some serious gains in your step score, but doctors aren't going to hate you. So what are we waiting for? Let's push it to the limit. All right, we can start with the two health nuts in the foreground using the machines. You might think they're here for a full body workout, but you're wrong. Future Mr. and Mrs. Universe here have recognized that before they get absolutely yoked, they first must address their biggest weakness, scrawny thighs. See how wimpy their thighs are? You might even say these two are thigh deficient, huh? Their thigh deficiency will help us think of thiamine deficiency. We've kept the thiamine symbol the same in both of our vitamin B1 scenes, but we should point out that in the biochemistry scene, the protagonist's thigh was healthy and hearty, while the thighs in our deficiency scene are straight puny. That should help you keep them straight. Okay, let's start with our female gym goer. Notice how she's chugging a sports drink to replenish her electrolytes and keep her going strong through... Oh, just kidding, that's not a sports drink at all, it's a bottle of red wine. That's probably not going to help her grow her teeny thighs, but it will help us remember that thiamine deficiency is most commonly seen in alcoholics, who often don't get enough thiamine in their diets and don't absorb it well either. Thiamine deficiency is also seen in malnourished individuals, though this is less common. Now, how does an alcoholic with thiamine deficiency typically present? The answer can be found on the gym's smoothie stand in the back of the image. There are actually two common neurological presentations you'll need to remember that are combined under the name Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Our symbol for Wernicke-Korsakoff is a combo deal as well. The apple on the stand isn't really an apple anymore, it's just a core for Korsakoff. And I hope this Korsakoff core wasn't used in any of these health drinks, because there's a massive worm coming out of it. Although to be fair, worms are probably full of fiber and protein. Still gross though. The worm coming out of the apple core should help us remember Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. It should also remind you to always check your fruit for holes before biting in. Next, let's pan back to our wine-guzzling woman. Like I said before, wernicke apple korsakoff actually represents two forms of thiamine deficiency CNS disease. Wernicke is the acute form, and Korsakoff results from chronic Wernicke. However, both are the result of thiamine deficiency, keep in mind our character's weak, deficient thighs, and both are the result of damage to two key areas of the brain. Take a look at what our female character is knocking over in her drunken, thigh-blasting frenzy. It's her pet fowl! Oh, the humanity! Oh, the fowlery. Sure. This soon-to-be-damaged fowl represents damage to the thalamus, or fowlimus, specifically the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus, in Wernicke-Korsakoff. If we look closer, we can see that the fowlimus's water bottle is getting upended as well. The bottle's nipple being damaged will help remind us that damage to the mammillary bodies is seen in around 80% of Wernicke-Korsakoff patients. You know, since mammillary means nipple in Latin. Or because mammillary bodies totally look like boobs, and so does the top of that bottle. If that helps you more. Moving forward, we'll now delve into the symptoms of Wernicke, the acute form of encephalopathy that results from a vitamin B1 deficiency. If we look out the front windows, we can see a taxi idling by. Wernicke presents with a clinical triad, all of which is covered by our taxi. First, patients with Wernicke encephalopathy will present with confusion, and if we look at our taxi driver, he's looking pretty confused. Maybe the person he was waiting for never showed up, or maybe he's never seen thigh blasting taken to such extremes. The second finding in the triad is ataxia, which is perfect because this wobbly taxi is our recurring symbol for ataxia. Finally, peep those wonky headlights on our ataxia taxi. These represent the ocular findings in the Wernicke triad, ophthalmoplegia and nystagmus. Those headlights really do look like messed up eyes. 
Kind of reminds me of that animated movie about anthropomorphic cars, but like, if the cars were all alcoholics presenting with nystagmus. Maybe too much for kids. I'd still watch it. Anyway, let's pan over to our other thigh-pumping character. Patients presenting with signs of Wernicke syndrome are easily treated with exogenous thiamine. However, this treatment comes with an important caveat. Take a look at how our thigh-pumping man has set out some sugar cubes as a treat for finishing his workout. Problem is, our thin thigh guy tried to go for those sugar cubes before he finished his workout, and this sugar has fallen on the battery of his thigh machine, breaking it. Have some discipline, man! No wonder why they say you should always finish your thiamine before taking glucose. And why is that battery just sitting out there? Seems kind of dangerous. Anyway, this broken battery should help remind us of the ATP depletion that occurs if glucose, or dextrose, is administered before giving thiamine in B1 deficient patients. As for why this occurs, think back to our scene on thiamine biochemistry. Remember which enzymes require thiamine and TPP to proceed? That's right, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and pyruvate dehydrogenase, both of which are important for breaking down glucose and generating ATP. So without thiamine, glucose can't be fully metabolized. This is very high yield because examiners love showing you an alcoholic who develops severe Wernicke syndromes after being given IV dextrose. Remember that these symptoms are confusion, nystagmus, and ataxia. Just picture the sugar breaking our battery here to remember that thiamine needs to be administered before dextrose to decrease the risk of precipitating a Wernicke encephalopathy. To finish off the CNS problems in thiamine deficient patients, let's get back to the smoothie counter and take a look at our unenthused smoothie guy. You'd think the giant worm coming from his apple would warrant more of a reaction. Oh well. The first thing you'll notice about this fella is his hulking hunker. You might be thinking he's bummed because people keep calling him Pinocchio. Well, you're wrong again. He's bummed because he is Pinocchio, and life as a teenage puppet is just as much of a drag as life is for any other teenager working for minimum wage. Up until this point, we've only covered the Wernicke half of Wernicke Korsakoff. Pinocchio's in our image to get us the rest of the way. Korsakoff patients are those who have had multiple instances of Wernicke encephalopathy, which results in permanent brain damage that is not reversed by thiamine administration. Korsakoff patients have trouble forming new memories, and to compensate for this, they'll often lie to fill in the gaps. This behavior, referred to as confabulation, is perfectly represented by the most famous pathological liar of all, the original boy toy, Pinocchio. All right, we're almost done. Just a few more reps. Hang in there. We've just got to knock out the last couple of diseases caused by thiamine deficiency, the berry berries. Check out the right half of confabulating Pinocchio's smoothie stand. He's got a pile of dried berries for topping the smoothies and some very wet looking berries in a spa water dispenser. What great post-workout snacks. Unless you're thiamine deficient. Wouldn't want all that natural sugar precipitating Wernicke syndrome. Anyway, these berries represent the dry and wet forms of berry berry. We'll cover both of them. First, look under the pile of dry berries. Yep, it's our recurring symbol for polyneuropathy, a frayed electrical cord. Pinocchio's really letting things go south on his watch, huh? Patients with dry berry berry present with the gradual development of polyneuropathy, that is, tingling, numbness, and burning in the extremities, as well as symmetrical muscle wasting. Conversely, wet beriberi is more acute in onset. If we look beneath the spa water, we can see that a motivational sign telling patrons to get heart healthy is getting wet, weak, and torn because someone has positioned it right beneath the water spout. Dang it, Pinocchio, what are they even paying you for? This torn heart poster is there to remind us of the acute onset, high output, dilated cardiomyopathy in wet beriberi, which leads to the formation of edema. And we did it! We sweat our way through this whole fitness scene. This was an intense workout, so let's do a quick recap to cool down. Thiamine deficiency, represented by our character's deficient thighs, is most commonly seen in alcoholics, like our guzzling girl. Wernicke encephalopathy can be precipitated by the ingestion of sugar before thiamine, remember our crazy sugar battery, 
and consists of a clinical triad of confusion, ataxia, and nystagmus, all of which are represented by our wobbly taxi. Repeated damage to the mammillary bodies and the thalamus results in true Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, which adds amnesia and confabulation to the mix of CNS findings and is represented by our apathetic Pinocchio. Finally, thiamine deficiency can result in either dry or wet beriberi. Dry beriberi involves the peripheral nerves and muscle, while wet beriberi causes dilated cardiomyopathy and edema. Phew! Vitamin B1 is B done. Now that you've mastered the biochemical roles and disease states of thiamine, you'll be ready to shred those board exams to pieces. And all this studying is good for your buns and thighs, right? Yeah, buns and thighs. Until next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarize.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, Share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.